Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, welcome back to Giga Texas. That's Wednesday, the 7th of June, 2023. It's a beautiful day to fly. For the intro, I'm gonna talk about two brief items and then we're gonna do a sort of a deep dive discussion about what's going on at the Megapack facility right now. First, the geopiers that we saw on the south end have actually been relocated all the way up to the east side of the battery cathode plant and they're working on that east side clearing that we've seen some earthwork going on uh, recently. So very interesting change. I think this is just temporary and they'll return back to the south end. The other thing I want to show you is just on the north end, right outside the plastics manufacturing, we see a few racks of what are molds for the Model Y bumpers. And these are used to actually manufacture the Model Y bumpers right inside this part of the factory. So it's pretty cool to see them out and to get an idea of what they look like. So without further ado, let's talk a little about the uh, deliveries and what's going on with the construction here at the Megapack site at Giga Texas. For today, I wanted to look closer at some of the developments that are going on at the Omega Pack construction site just north of Tesla Road. And to do that, we'll be using some of the source documents. The link is at the bottom of the screen and also in the video description if you would like to have more information. Also, as a reminder, I did a deep dive investigation into the Megapack construction site, and we did a deep dive into all of these documents on my 7 May 2023 video. So I'd recommend you take a look at that for more information. So for this discussion, we're going to concentrate on the north end of the Megapack construction site, specifically where we see these trenches and the cable trays being installed. Referring back to that source document, specifically page 48, it gives this diagram and it describes how the mega packs will actually be installed and then connected electrically, and then eventually how that will all join into the electrical switch yard. Now it talks about 68 total mega packs. These will be grouped together into eight initial transformers. And then after that, four sets of switch gear, and then there'll be some cable trays that will route much of the wiring over to uh, additional equipment that will then be connected to the electrical switch yard. And then looking back at that image from the site, we can see the eight individual trenches. Those are for the transformers, and then they will connect to the four listed switch gear. And then you can see highlighted in yellow, the cable trays that are already in place. And then around that, and then further to the north, we can see those screw type piers for additional equipment already in place. In addition to that, we've seen concrete pads delivered on the south end near the material storage location. And we see that there are already 72 of the concrete pads delivered. And this would add up to 68 mega packs and four transformers for a total of 72. Now this may not be the final number. We may see some additional concrete pads delivered, but it is interesting how all of this seems to be adding up to match what the planning documents show. So this is a quick review of what we're seeing on the site right now, and I hope it puts into context why we're seeing the concrete pads, what they're doing with the trenching on the north end, and how that portion of the site is starting to shape up. As a reminder, take a look at my 7 May 2023 video for more in-depth information. So now let's get ready to get into the drone and take a look at how Giga Texas looks today. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. For this morning, I'm starting off the west side to show you how this is progressing with some of the earthwork, the road work on the right hand side going through the center between the two large material storage locations and that uh, warehouse on wheels yard with all of the trailers. Now we've had some more rain come through the area recently, so it's still a lot of mud. So I think that's uh, delaying the earthwork on this side until it can uh, dry out and they can resume. This material storage location with the tents continues to be busy. We can see in the middle of the screen more of the preparation for the road that will eventually connect to Tesla Road just to the left of the screen. Also another section with concrete and steel parts being stockpiled here for future assembly inside of the factory. Also there's a small workshop here that does modification for the steel parts. So let's uh, finish up on the west side of the highway and we'll resume back at the main factory.
Back at the factory side of the highway, we see activity with uh, vapors coming out of the vents on the northwest corner of the building. Inside is that uh, section where the 4680s are produced. So that shows that uh, production work continues inside, which is uh, great to see. Now, as we continue to fly south along the west side of the highway, I'll point uh, to the white stain on the concrete walls, more of the plastic on the windows to help protect them from any of the uh, drips of the a white stain and they are continuing to move towards the north in a fairly rapid fashion and they're getting close to that northwest corner so probably in another week we may see them starting to wrap around the north side of the building which will be great to see now as we continue flying south along this side of the building uh, we can see that the end of line with these two tents is not all that busy right now but then again we are here right at the beginning of the shift for today uh, but if we take a look as I maneuver the drone inside those two openings, you can see many model Ys moving around some of the lights flashing as they finish up some of those checks before the vehicle will exit the, the building. And then when they do, they'll come down that ramp, as you see one uh, right now. They come over to these tents and then they'll do uh, some final checkouts before they're moved over to the east side at that uh, testing and calibration lot and get some supercharging. We also see materials being stockpiled here. Notice that uh, one package that has GA2. This is for the General Assembly Line 2, which is being installed inside. There's also General Assembly Line 3 that is being installed as well. So, uh, and that extends on all the levels on this side of the building from about these uh, large glass windows all the way to the south. So there's quite a bit of uh, activity and uh, work being done to set up production lines inside this part of the building. And where this ramp is, we can see some more materials. We've seen a lot being moved into that section. Again, that's where a lot of that assembly of the production lines is going on. And it extends from the ground floor, second floor, third floor, and even a fourth floor mezzanine inside. Now at the southwest corner at this temporary platform, we can see many equipment items. They almost look like uh, cabinets for machinery are getting ready to be moved up inside. Also on top of the platform, you can see that green dumpster. In there is concrete that has been broken up and is being removed for recycling, which indicates further uh, reconfiguration work is going on inside the third floor of this building. You can also see some of the other large equipment items that have been moved inside, just inside that door, waiting for eventual movement to their final locations. And as you can see, a lot of activity uh, going on here to prepare to move those large items up to that uh, platform. As I pan back towards the south, this southwest corner excavation work, we see these white pipes being put in. Now these are smaller diameter pipes, so I'm not sure exactly what these are, but if you can see on the side of the building and then sort of in the middle of the ground, there's larger diameter white pipes. And I think those may be related to the uh, roof vents or roof uh, rain drains uh, at some point uh, that will be needed for this extension. So anyway, there's two different diameters of pipe being installed into these uh, uh, locations. Right now, the ones that are in that trench are the smaller diameter. But you can see how the trench work is starting to progress towards the east along this side. And that will mirror what we've seen on the southeast corner. The early morning sun is beautiful, but it is creating a little bit of a challenge with some of the lighting. Uh, but I wanted to show you here that the continuous light auger drills and the two cranes have moved and are working right in front of the stamping two, two large doors where some of those uh, uh, little carts are uh, coming out of. And uh, they're continuing to work their way along this side of the building. They've already finished those piers, and we've also seen Geo Pier here in this section with those white pipes. And as I mentioned, this will probably be mirrored on that southwest corner. Now, also, all of the Geo Piers have been removed, uh, that equipment from this side, and they've been moved up to the battery cathode plant. And we'll see that a little later in the video. 
The crews here are doing their morning uh, calisthenics and getting ready for the work to begin today. And these crews are fashioning rebar cages, both the square ones and also some of the round ones that are used for the CFA piles. And those square ones will be used for footings that will help support columns for the eventual uh, constructed uh, building. On this side of the cyber pond, the river road extension work continues. Uh, it's fairly well laid out now, but again, with the rains, I think it's uh, slowing some of the progress. You can see a lot of the ponded water here, but also uh, those pallets are solar panels. We see a lot more of these gray steel beams have been delivered in this section as well. So that's a great sign to see. Plus a lot of rebar is being uh, stockpiled here and again, that is a great to see because a lot of that rebar is going to be used for those um, uh, rebar cages for the footings and also eventually for some of the uh, slabs that will be poured. So uh, again, it's great to see that. Across this road, we see this trench and it looks to me like this is electrical conduit that is going to run underneath this new road. This may be to allow for light posts to uh, illuminate this entire section once it's completed. Um, and there are several of these trenches across this road graded section. So I'll expect to see more of that conduit installed here as well. An interesting thing is on the uh, road here that comes underneath the bridge and then towards the main factory, it looks like they have these small, I don't know, uh, pipes, almost like uh, black cones put on the roadway to help delineate the lanes a little bit better. So that's interesting to see. And then by this trailer, the crews are preparing to build more of those rebar cages. In fact, you see the forklift picking up one right now. Those are used for the CFA piles and they are inserted down into the concrete, into the bores to help make that a very strong pile that will be used to help support portions of the building once that uh, is constructed. So let's uh, fly up a little bit higher, get a good overall view of the south end, that river road extension just south of the cyber pond and all of those trenches with the conduit that we talked about, all the materials on the bottom of the screen that are starting to be stockpiled here and how the main construction site looks today. On this east side, we can see at the bottom right of the screen that uh, kind of an intersection where that river road will come to this point from underneath the uh, south side of the cyber pond. And then we see the roads, the two lanes heading up to the right of the screen. Those go north and those will join into the existing road that parallels the east side. And then amongst these uh, trees, the road intersection will continue as the road is extended to the east and then over to the north near the Colorado River. Near the east side of the stamping machine structure, we see more of those white parts and more deliveries of the wooden crates with more materials uh, today. Um, we also get a chance to see just some of the activity that uh, goes on this side of the building. And again, those uh, blue containers that you see are actually um, ice containers that also have water and those are used around the site for the uh, workers to make sure that they are able to stay hydrated. Now, as we get closer to the testing and calibration lot, this is where the vehicles that we saw coming out of the end of line on the west side of the building are delivered. There's a test track, you can see a Model Y driving on it right now where they have rumble strips and uh, do some additional testing. And then the cars are put into queue for supercharging and final checkouts, and then they are moved over to the new car staging and transportation lot. At the bottom right of the screen, we see what looks to be a Model Y being uh, at least positioned to go up onto that turntable for that wind tunnel. And that's a very interesting thing to see and uh, something I'll just continue to monitor. Now, as we fly over the green belt, I'll look back over that clearing. Uh, again, with all the water there, not a really lot of activity that is going on. And then on the other side of the trees, you can see some of the materials here. You can see that roadway with the planted trees right through the middle and extending over to that uh, clearing location. And then at the bottom of the screen, another clearing location with a lot of piles of dirt. Um, and I don't know if this is uh, for future work or if it's just a temporary location. 
Now this clearing here with all of the uh, equipment shows that they are really preparing for the recycling operations to begin here. See that workshop, the red items, those are industrial compactors, a lot of the uh, blue uh, containers for the debris. Uh, we can see some ramps with some of the uh, trailers here, those red and uh, black ramps, more of the pallets on the corner, and then that uh, raised, uh, probably a loading dock location. And uh, I'll, as we continue the drone flying towards the uh, north along this side, I'll show you where that recycling centers used to be. Some of the recycled and cut out concrete panels on the left-hand side of the screen, more of the materials that are stored here in addition to more of those old concrete panels from the south side of the building being temporarily stored here. Many of the trailers that are part of the uh, contractors that are working on constructing Giga Texas. This large hill, which is kind of a debris hill, which has been used for recycling. And then also this section here. And as I zoom in, you can see how it's been cleaned up. This is where they've been breaking down a lot of those pallets and other packing materials for recycling. Also, some of the vehicle bodies that uh, no longer are needed are uh, Com compacted here and broken up and then ready for recycle as well. This clearing on the other side of this hill is where those red recyclers that we saw in that new clearing on the southeast side came from. And you can see how it's being cleaned up uh, as if this is going to be used for another purpose at some point in time. As we fly over the center part of this east section, this gives you a good idea of some of the activity that is going on here, plus a lot of the steel uh, materials that are stored here in and amongst many of these workshops. As we continue to go to the north side of the warehouse on wheels here, this material staging location continues to grow a lot of different kinds of materials, some wrapped in green and white plastic, some of them are just the basic materials. And then here, all of these white materials next to these uh, tanks, uh, and then extending up to the right in that white plastic. These are called um, TKS systems. They're part of a paint system. And I believe this may be related to the passenger cabin portion of the Cybertruck, which is a set of steel uh, parts that are welded together and uh, will need to have some sort of corrosion control. There are some Model Ys being stored over on this side of the, section, uh, the material staging as well. So as we fly up uh, towards the northeast, we'll take a look at what is going on with the uh, battery cathode plant today. When we were on the south side of the factory, I mentioned that the geo piers had been relocated, and this is where they came to. Now, this entire section has had some earthwork. They've been preparing this surface, and it looks like it may be being prepared as some sort of a roadway, perhaps. But also, it could be because of the geo pier equipment here that it may be a new structure that is going to be uh, constructed. It's hard to tell right now, but with the geo piers here, both the drilling and compacting items, plus some of the gravel mix. It shows that uh, we will expect to see geo pairs installed, most likely on that flat prepared surface uh, in the very near future. And this will be definitely something to monitor as uh, time goes on to see what it is that they are adding to this structure and this east side. As I pan the drone around and we'll prepare to go back up to the north, this is just a good view of how this side appears today. More and more of the equipment and parts are being moved in and installed inside, so uh, this uh, is slowly clearing out, which is great to see. This small structure on the bottom right is the cell test lab. Looks like there's many generators, those white items nearby. I don't know if it's specifically to support this or not, but it is very interesting. We can see how the uh, uh, inside of this one section that's open it looks today, there's a concrete wall panel ready for installation. You can see some more conduit with some of that concrete on top going to the north uh, east corner of the building. And then these items appear to be windows. 
And I think that what uh, we'll see is these windows installed along the battery cathode plant, particularly on the north side of the building. And the reason why I think that uh, as we get closer here is the crews have been busy with the gray beams uh, on this side uh, along where the windows would go. And I think that they're doing is they're preparing the mounts for those particular windows. So I would expect to see a windowed section on this part of the building and just above where those receiving doors are located on this side of the building as well. So it's pretty cool to see. That means that uh, the exterior of the building is rapidly getting to the point where it may be completed. As we fly to the northeast, uh, gives you a good view of this clearing location, that large hill that continues to be slowly removed as the dirt is redistributed around the site. And then today, because the weather conditions are perfect, I thought I would fly all the way up to the far northeast to show you how this section of the site appears. Now, more of those concrete panels that were removed uh, from the south side of the building are stored here temporarily. The Quonset Hut uh, section is the maintenance facility for this equipment rental lot. And it looks like there's a vehicle getting maintenance right now. It actually looks like a yard truck. Uh, you can see how they have some of these containers and other materials uh, around this site. A lot of the mud because of all the rain. And then a very interesting uh, thing that I noticed here, and I'll kind of uh, give you a good view, is it looks like various kinds of generators are being stored here. And this is similar to one of those generators that we saw next to that cell test lab. So as I fly over towards the west across these hills and ponds that are the remnants of the old sand and gravel mine that was this entire section at one time, uh, this gives you a good view view now of this large clearing which is uh, permitted as the north logistics lot but currently is being used as material storage for quite a bit of materials and much of this would potentially be uh, items used for production lines and this pullback gives you a really good sense of just how much materials are being stored in this section of the site. And also looking way off in the distance, you can see what Giga Texas looks like. And also in the distance, the uh, battery cathode plant and the dye shop. So this is well far north of the factory. And it is interesting to see just how much of the materials are being stored here. Now, as we continue to progress back towards the uh, battery cathode plant, uh, over this green belt and those ponds that are again the remnants of the sand and gravel mine. This gives you a good sense of how this section on the west has continued to be widened. The berms have almost been completely removed. There is some work that is continuing, but just how they've widened this section uh, significantly on this side of the uh, structures. As we fly even further closer to this alleyway between the two structures, the chiller plant uh, continues to see quite a bit of operation and activity today. The crane is getting ready to lift uh, some items up onto that roof section with the grate material and then over where all of those pipes are located. On the ground floor and underneath the structure, quite a bit of the uh, piping, pumps, and tanks. On the ground, you can see some of those concrete manhole covers that are being installed. And then here between the structure and the nitrogen vaporizers, more work on the manifolds on the ground level uh, near where that uh, uh, kind of cordoned off section is located and also a blue item nearby uh, the tanks as well. So uh, again, a lot of activity. I've had some a questions asked, why is it going so slow? I think it's just that it's such a complex system. It's taking them a long time to assemble it. As we fly around the east side of the die shop, again, you can see another one of those white generators uh, that we saw up at that uh, rental equipment rental lot uh, being used here and some more materials being stockpiled on the roof. And then where the electrical conduit is being installed along this section of the ground. It looks like there's some rework that is being done or at least retrenching uh, in this particular section. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see that long black pipe, that's HDPE pipe, which is used for treated water. And I'm wondering if that may go into this trench as well. As we go over that road, you can see where more of the conduit goes underneath that section. And then this is where that's progressed so far some more of the concrete vaults and uh, this is where the conduit will go through and then it will continue up towards where the power lines are located and connect into the other conduit that we see 
being installed for the Mega Pack and the Switchyard. Underneath the power lines here, we can also see work continues with the underground storm water pipe, in this case, concrete pipes. And eventually this will tie into the entire water management system for this entire site and redirect the water, uh, mostly from rainwater away from here and then down into the other uh, rainwater management system that goes around the entire factory. At the south end of the electrical switchyard, we see a lot more work going on at the bottom of this excavation and near that retaining wall. Also, the conduit that is connecting the Megapack site in the distance underneath the power lines and then over to this particular section. And as I pull away, you can get a good sense of the work that's going on at the bottom of the uh, excavation site right now and how this continues to transform and it is slowly raising that uh, level of that uh, excavation site so still monitoring to see what they're going to install in that particular section. Another interesting uh, development here at the electrical switchyard which is a major milestone is all of the gravel mix appears to be spread now throughout the entire facility and uh, in and amongst the gravel, you can see the cable trays that uh, extend into the structure itself and then over to that control room. The gravel mix provides a grounding function uh, for the site and uh, is necessary before they can energize the electrical switch yard. The fact that they are just about finished now, as you can see, is a great sign. So I'm not sure when we'll start seeing electricity in, uh, attached to and started the testing, but they are getting close, uh, which is outstanding. Now, as we fly up over the switch yard, you can see the mega pack site in the distance and we'll get us some close looks and some review of what we talked about in the intro uh, shortly. Here I'm trying to fly the drone in a way to give you a good appreciation for the work that is going on here at the north end. Most of the crews are preparing some new excavations near where those screw type piers have been installed. You can see the cable trays uh, in that sort of a T type function uh, going up to the north. And then with the inset, this shows you from the planning documents the eight trenches that will connect to the mega packs and then those four uh, locations where they'll have electrical. Uh, devices attached and then that'll continue with the cable trays to the north and then eventually will connect over to the electrical switch yard. The main site here on either side with those steel uh, uh, devices, that's where the trenching has been done with the conduit for the two mega bank banks. And then you can see the gravel section in the middle and then some surveyors right now doing the work to ensure that everything is square and as it should be. As we continue to fly to the south over the uh, yard location, the trailers on the right for some of the contractors, some of the steel materials and the poles that'll be used to connect the mega pack over to the electrical switch yard. Again, more materials on the right. And then here are the 72 concrete pads that uh, as we discussed in the intro, I believe will be used for the mega packs and also the transformers and other equipment uh, that's uh, on that construction site. Uh, definitely something to monitor, but uh, anyway, hopefully this review and what we talked about in the intro was helpful. On the north end of the building and these two large uh, doors that you see, this is the plastic manufacturing section of the building. And you can see these racks on either side here. I'll do a, a zoom in in a second and show you what they are. But these are molds that are used to actually manufacture the Model Y front and rear bumpers. And these are used with injection molded machines to actually make the uh, uh, bumpers themselves and I'm not sure why these are out here. They may be uh, new molds that are getting ready for installation or maybe there's some of the old ones that are getting swapped out. But anyway, uh, I think that was neat to be able to see that and also just remind you that Giga Texas also makes a lot of the plastics uh, that are used for the Model Y and eventually will be used for the Cybertruck. 
Here's some more deliveries that are being made just to the north side of the paint shop. Not exactly sure what these are, but there's quite a few of these uh, uh, items that are being stockpiled here for movement inside. As we go over the fire water loop pit that uh, continues to see some work, we can see the electrical conduit work uh, being uh, completed here. Uh, the conduit is being stored here, the two concrete vaults. I've had a viewer suggest that uh, maybe the existing conduits that go underneath the casting machine structure are being reworked perhaps. Uh, and then that explains why they're doing all of this work here in this berm that has been widened. Now, those conduits extend all the way up to the mega pack and the electrical switch yard and eventually will power the factory. Some more interesting wooden crates have been delivered. Activity here where all the castings are stored. And then in the doors here, more of that work on that ground slab reconfiguration where they've removed all the concrete. They've done some excavation work and it now looks like they're preparing for a new slab inside the section. So I'm not sure what that's for, but it is interesting to note that they are doing that reconfiguration work inside the casting machine structure. So there you have it, a good view across a wide ranging part of Giga Texas today. I hope that you enjoyed the views and the information. And as always, thank you very much for your support. I very much do appreciate it. I really can't do this without uh, all of the great support that I get from my viewers and my Patreons. As always, again, thank you very much for your help, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.